My first placement I stayed with uh, Dr Panther uh, at his house and we had a, a great time. This particular trip I'm staying um, with Rosemary and Ron on an avocado farm. Rosemary and Ron have taken me out to meet quite a few people in town and uh, also have had the opportunity to go to places in and around Mariba. I guess I really like getting out of town just to see like the central Australian landscape. You get to really appreciate how vast Australia is really. Well, it's Alice Springs, we're in the middle of nowhere and there's no one around. Um, yeah, no, it's just so peaceful. Uh, you're here by yourself, you get to, yeah, think, really. The paramedic team, they're like a family. They look after each other. It's really a close-knit um, group. <laughs> There's been stressful situations and stresses within the families or within the work environment that uh, has made uh, being an outsider a little bit difficult, not understanding where they've come from. Um, so yeah, there has been stresses within the, the placement. It's not all rosy, so to speak. A lot of the patients and their families dealing with uncomfortable and stressful situations. I guess I can, I can relate to a case, actually. It was a motor vehicle accident uh, where it was a 21-year-old uh, male patient who crashed his vehicle and subsequently died. That did hit me pretty uh, hard, I guess. The paramedic I was working with at the time on that case, uh, she was extremely supportive. I just talked about what I was feeling and I also kept a diary, so I just jotted everything down as well, just so I could reflect on it. first two days I've been at Step Out Community Programme, which is for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. My role at Step Out was mainly observing because it's my first developmental disability um, practical. So I'm just observing just to gain some experience really of how they communicate and how the carers look after them. Carers are very respectful, um, always maintain patient's dignity, confidentiality. Um, they've really been great. Today I was in Kintour Street School, which is a school for intellectually and developmentally disabled children. Today we took a little girl up to the preschool because she likes um, music one. and they had a music teacher there who was singing to the children and teaching the music so we took her up there and then this afternoon we um, made some flowers out of paper with her so she can feel the sh <laughs> that's a big one Today. My facilitator is based at Charles Darwin University. I usually go and see her every morning before I go on my placement and ring her after. I've got loads of support here really. Definitely experienced um, periods of isolation and loneliness, um, but the people here have been quite supportive. It's important to get the social networks up and uh, interact with the community. It is difficult um, being away from home, being away from families and friends. Um, I keep in touch with them um, weekly, so you're not that far away from home given modern technology nowadays. There are um, other paramedical students and I've really interacted with them and um, being part of rural health clubs um, and just knowing different um, people, like there's medical students and nursing students here that I've caught up with and uh, interacted socially. I've known Felix for a few years. It was great when I arrived in Alice um, a week and a half ago to already know someone here and be able to um, catch up with them and feel like there's a friend in town. I grew up in Sydney, went to school in Sydney and hadn't really considered rural um, health at all but then I got involved in my rural health club in first year of uni. I went to the Northern Territory to a community about 400 kilometres east of here called Bonya and it was an amazing experience where I learnt a lot and it made me really passionate and wanting to come back. Thanks for reading your letter, Claire. Let us stay out. Yes, mate, just try and make him comfortable. We'll get an ambulance out to see you soon. In a rural area, you see 
very much a multidisciplinary team. You have all the allied health, nurses, Thank doctors, you. ambulance officers and paramedics just going out there and just working for the benefit of the patients. Whereas I think um, in, in, um, in a city environment, it's a lot more structured, a lot more rank and hierarchy. Uh, working as a paramedic in Alice Springs, if a serious case does come in, there generally might not be extra backup or extra resources available. As a crew member, I think it's uh, actually more challenging, uh, a lot more hands-on, and you get to do a lot more interventions by yourself. And I think that's why I wanted to do the rural placement in the first place. <laughs> I think this rural placement has helped me academically. I can relate to a lot more different case studies. So yeah, hopefully it will give me a few more better marks this year. I think there used to be a bit of a myth that uh, going to the country um, uh, causes you to, to do poorly academically. And I think the rural clinical school certainly proved uh, last year having the top student at Melbourne Uni that uh, that's not necessarily the case and uh, quite a few studies have come out in the last couple of years showing that uh, students who study at rural clinical schools and particularly students who study uh, in rural general practice actually do better than their uh, city counterparts so I think uh, the reason for that is, is you get a lot more hands-on. <laughs> I'm Simon Wilcock, I'm a GP in Hornsby which is Metropolitan Sydney and I'm also Associate Professor of General Practice at the University of Sydney and Chair of the Board of, of GPET. When I was a final year medical student I was quite convinced that I'd be staying in the city and probably specialising in some area at the big teaching hospital where I trained. But when I was halfway through my internship I realised there were so many things that I didn't want to give up like, like obstetrics, anaesthetics, paediatrics. That I really wanted to keep doing all of those things and decided that I'd go and be a rural GP. The people at the hospital where I was working tended to say I was crazy, other than a few who, uh, who were my real mentors. They told me that it would put a, uh, a stop to my career and in fact I think I developed faster and broader than I ever would have done by staying in the city. My wife and I spent 10 years out of Sydney in two different rural locations and it was just the best time of our lives. I've learned a lot more about developmental disability. I think I would well consider done. rural nursing, but maybe not kind of straight away. Um, I get some, like, lots more experience first, and I might try it in a couple of years' time, even if it's just for a year or two, or who knows. Definitely a lot of my colleagues are extremely inspiring. Oh, they've had so much experiences, and, uh, well, they're extremely wise from my point of view, um, definitely my role, model, role models and definitely want to be like that one day. Having a few grey hairs does help a bit, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I've learnt a lot more about what general, general practice involves and also uh, what the rural GP does so they don't just sit in a clinic um, and refer all day, uh, they actually uh, have quite complex patients, uh, they do procedures, uh, they go to um, emergency for on call nights. They uh, can also do anaesthetics uh, at the local hospital and deliver babies. I think rural general practice offers you a greater diversity than you can get uh, in, in any more focused career path. It's definitely been rewarding, this uh, rural uh, placement. Um, it's definitely improved my skills, uh, improved my knowledge of, uh, of the type of work that rural paramedics do. There's definitely a lot more to learn and uh, I think, yeah, I think that I'll develop that over my career but yeah, it's definitely given me a good glimpse of the different life and the different cultures around. Mm -hmm.